like he's fast. Like devil. He's fast. <laughs> Carrying a lot of speed. Just a couple of turns to go. Jordan Williams, 18 years old. Oh, he's looking. Oh, oh. that was fast. And here we go, Rachel Afferton. It's Super time. Bruni. What is the second split going to say? Now she's going to have to hit the gas. The fastest bump in the world on track. Wow! And she's wobbling. Jordan Williams crosses the line. Whoa! Williams goes into the hot seat. Troy Brosnan claps. Dakota Norton cannot believe it. Yes, it is time to go racing once more at the UCI Mountain Bike Downhill World Cup. We're in Leah Gang Salzburger land for one of the absolute classics of the calendar. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth today is the man, the myth, the legend, Cedric Gracia. Cedric, semi-finals first. Should be exciting. <laughs> Should be exciting what we saw last week. Hello, everyone. So happy and it's dry. It's sunny Leo Gang. Leo Gang in the sun. I should apologize for the rain yesterday. That was my fault for telling everybody about how dry it had been all week. Sure enough then, it turned into, uh, basically, if Kevin Costner had gone past on a catamaran, it couldn't have been any wetter, so. Semi-final start list is all over the shop. We've got some of the big names mixing it in there with some riders that we wouldn't have expected to see in there heading your way. Here is the running order for this afternoon. The semi-final for the elite women, then the semi-final for the elite men. Final for the elite women and then the final for the elite men at two o'clock. Tomorrow, all about cross country Olympic, but look, we'll get to that when we get to that. Today is all about downhill. A very mixed bag of results, as I say, from yesterday. Sunny out there today, 16 degrees, humidity 57%. So it can and often does do anything in the mountains, Cedric, but a fascinating race here for us today, given that, I mean, it's starting from scratch, isn't it? Exactly. It's just a new start today. I mean, it's a mountain sport. You know, <laughs> this could happen. It happened yesterday. But big game. Yeah, and we will not be seeing this man. We may well be able to hear from him later on. Though Amari Pierron sidelined with that back injury. I heard he's in town though. Arrived last night. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't miss much. <laughs> Aaron Gwynn as well. Unfortunately, the winner not here this weekend. The man who won here without a chain in 2015. We all remember that, eh? Yeah, we're wishing him all the best in the recuperation process. Some arm and shoulder injuries suffered at round one. But the crowds are filling in here for a place that always provides great racing. Always, and um, it's going to be difficult today as well after practice on such a diff you know, different feel, different setup on the bike. It's going to be tough to have the right setup. Yeah, I was down in the pits earlier on today and it, it felt almost like the first day of practice because the, the setups, honestly, before that rain yesterday, we were talking about this being possibly the fastest ever downhill World Cup track speeds. Up near 80 kilometers an hour up there and then the heavens opened not once but twice. Kind of flooded everyone out. So now the track, it's actually, it's actually whisper at Cedric. I don't want to curse it again. It's looking better. Yeah, better Rachel than Rachel Afferton, the fastest mum in the world on track. 39 UCI World Cup wins to her name and she dearly loved to make it a nice round 40. Afferton crosses the line. I felt like I slotted straight back into it, you know. I love racing and I, I take it so seriously and that's, that seems to be just naturally what I can do, you know. I, I guess I've done it for so many years, it, it literally felt like I'd never been away. It was mad. The family right there! There's the Ollie and her daughter. I love having a kid and having a baby and it's awesome, but it's really hard just suddenly stepping away from that focus and that dedication to, to being a racer and to pushing yourself and getting the best out of yourself. And I found it really hard to not have a goal, you know, and a focus. So I knew I wanted to do some races this year for sure. And I couldn't commit myself to training properly until 
I was getting more sleep and really she's been sleeping better for a few months and I started training. It's so hard to get fit. I want to be strong. I'm fed up of having a bad back, you know, I'm fed up of feeling rubbish. I've ridden like once down a bike since before Christmas. It's so fun. I literally can't believe how fun it is. <laughs> I've been training for about two months. I live at W Bike Park and I ride there every single weekend, two, three days a week. And that is that has got to be, you know, good for you. Lapping the bike park all day. She can't beat Rachel Afferden, half a second oh. back. Afferden can't believe it, there's win number 40. Oh. Oh. I just can't believe it, it's mental. Oh my gosh. Leah Gang's next week and I just, I'm so exhausted. If I have a trio of wins, I also have about five injuries here. I like it here, but it never, I feel like it never really goes my way. It's a weird track because it's a lot of fast bike park stuff and then some gnarly technical. I've never ridden these new bottom woods, so I was really stoked to see that in real life. This track is one minute longer than last weekend. So for me, it's not ideal. <laughs> Just gets slower and slower as the track gets longer and longer. So I'm not sure what the tactic is this weekend, but I, I just know that uh, I just want to have a solid run and not get hurt. That's the main thing. For me this year, the, the goal is not to win world champs, but that's the goal. I know I've got a solid few months of training before that, so I can be a lot stronger and fitter. And now I've won last weekend. I don't really know. I guess I, I'm just, yeah, I'm just here to, to have fun still. Like, I really missed it, been at home and been a new mum. It's, it's so different, you know, it could not be more different to this adrenaline fueled kind of extreme testosterone driven lifestyle and it's basically like an awesome holiday with a bit of hard work in between. Well, one of the very, very best to ever do it. Rachel Afferton, 35 years young for Continental Afferton, 40 UCI World Cup wins, 67 podiums, which is almost more impressive. Yes. World Championship titles, five Leo Gang downhill wins, a trio of wins here in Austria for her. Cedric, they don't get much better than Rachel, do they? Yes, and uh, the way she just come back and did it, that it's just so special and uh, it was emotional for everyone and I think everyone loved Rachel and being a mom and be able to perform at this level, that uh, without, I mean, training of course, but no at 100%, then can she do it again? A very, on the bike, a very familiar Rachel Afferton off the bike a very very different character she seems like she's just really enjoying it and she's she's comfortable and she's she's with her family and she's racing i think she told us in that interview as well that maybe she had thought that those two worlds would be mutually exclusive but not at all she's enjoying being here let's have a look at the track here in lea gang the wook 4.0 section this top section critical all off camber then into the famous stump section where reese wilson did the business in worlds Big motorway. Big motorway, just about as fast as downhill tracks. Get them back into these lower technical woods that we just heard Rachel Afferton say. Pivotal. And then into the famous Finnish Bowl Arena where we have seen some of the biggest moments in downhill history take place. Okay, guys. Liu Gang 2023. Let's go. Dropping off the gate here. We got a hip into a corner. Same as last year. And this off camera is super blown out already. Um, Gap over the road. Everything's the same so far to last year, except for this. We go straight, and we got some grass off camera now. That's uh, pretty loose, but now we're back onto the old track. A few little doubles. It's quite windy up here, so you gotta watch out for that. And this stuff's dusty, but pretty much the same as last year. A little bit of a different tape job here. They took out the rollers that Lori looped out on last year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we go low, do a little gap, yo. Oh. Slightly different tape job, but still pretty much the same route. Through the tunnel, over here, this is another big change. We do it like this little checkup. And then you go off down here into this stump section. A lot of people are looking at this, checking out lines and stuff. Got through that pretty good, actually. Woo. Oh, don't miss the island. And we're onto the motorway. Woo. 
Love these jumps. Oh, got a full speed tuck for this next bit. A lot of time can be made or lost here over these jumps. But it's running fast this year, we're flying. Oh, I love this bit, it's so fun. Feels like on a roller coaster. Wah. Triple. Wah. See if I can do the gap or the wall ride. Wah. That was sketchy. Okay, we're back into the trees now, but it is running so fast compared to last year. Not even comparable. Another little new section here. Just kind of straightened it up a bit compared to last year. Help carry speed here as well. Straighten it up over the gap. Nice little scrub roller here. And we're close. Not there yet though. Got to make it through this last section first. That rut's hard, but I got it good. And we sprint and tuck to the finish. You. There it is. Just as simple as that then. Jackson Goldstone on the GoPro course preview for us. How can he talk like that and ride <laughs> exactly, that Exactly, that's what I was saying. How, how fast he was going, he was talking like he was basically in his living room. Unreal, here we go then. Camille Balanche leads the way. Rachel Afferton, 14 points back. Nina Hoffman, the Hoffman third. 120 points back though. Big gap already, huh? And here are the contenders we are going to be talking about today. Camille Balanche, the reigning overall title holder from last time out. Denied victory at home in Switzerland last time out. She'll be hungry for redemption here in Austria. Valentina Hall knows all the lefties by their first name. She grew up in this bike park and she was the fastest qualifier yesterday. She'll be hard to beat here. Rachel Afferton, the fastest mum in the world, going for 41 wins today. Just an unreal competitor. Unreal. Nina Hoffman, all about the race run pace. Whenever she's on one, it's hard to hassle the Hoff. Big competition on those ladies today. You know? Big, big, big competition. So, semi finals on their way. Here is how they will start. Louise Anna Ferguson from Continental Nuke Proof will get us underway presently with Frida Helena Ronning. After her, the Norwegian, and Anna Newkirk. Top 10 last time out for Newkirk. And then Tani Seagrave back in business for Canyon Collective FMD. Leads the way into the top five. So good to see her back, you know. So good to see Tani back in business. And let's head to the top now. So it's 10 elite women plus any protected riders outside of that will go through to the finals. Definitely see how the, the wood section, you know, been drying out. I saw the ride this morning and look already really dry. Cedric, I have to, I was scanning my memory banks last night, trying to remember a World Cup race where we saw such polar different sets of weather conditions. It was absolutely monsoon rain. You and I courageously hid in Bart Brenchin's pit and drank coffee whilst it rained. But the rain, as they would say back home, was bouncing, bouncing off the ground back up again. And then all of a sudden it stopped and it's roasting hot again. So 
What does that do for you as a racer? I mean, are you starting on a blank canvas today? Well, that, you know, like it, it, it gets in your head, you know, when you use your mechanic, you know, it starts raining like this, you know, it's going to be a difficult course. You know, it's going to be the same for everyone who is left at the start. Then it's all about, uh, you know, you have to start again. You put your extra visor there just to make sure the water is on the extra, you know, we usually, uh, uh, usually uh, use a lens. Just the water, don't go in your goggles. Yep. Um, set up different for the tires, but you don't know if it's worth it or not yet. It's just like how do you need to have people on the terrain, you know, you just send someone and say, ah, oh, wet is the woods, you know? Is it made more difficult by the fact that you've got that motorway section here? Because you can go to a more aggressive tire and downhill racing, you know, with taller knobs on the rubber to, to really dig into stuff, but you're going to sacrifice rolling speed on one of the very fastest sections, of course, anywhere in the world, as Louise Anna Ferguson leaves the start hub for Continental Nuke Proof Factory Racing. Let's see, there is the top section. We're seeing it for the first time, then down in through this route section that leads into the second route section. That first one, pretty straightforward compared to the second one. This one's savage. Exactly, and that's where a lot of people had problems yesterday because a lot of roots and stump, and uh, they exposed. They was full on in the rain yesterday. Like in the last wood section, at least it is alpine tree, then it's like making a little umbrella and it's harder to have the water <laughs> the water getting in. But that's, that's what it was. It worked like this. They're thick trees, like really thick trees. Yeah. This is a motorway here, like you need to save so much energy, but don't lose time too. We, we're heading out now onto the motorway section. So this is where speed, it's a temple of speed really in terms of downhill mountain bike racing. Now, that doesn't just mean that you can relax and get off the brakes though. You've got to nail all the backsides of these jumps individually to give yourself every kilometer an hour into this last wood section. And less hair time as possible, saving energy, position, like speed tucking and try to avoid so those extra things uh, to just don't lose energy and time. Yeah, Ferguson round that wall ride spends a lot of her time living and riding in New Zealand. So no stranger to going fast, plenty of good mountain biking down there. She heads in to give us our first look at this lower wood section for the first time, Cedric. Tell us what this one's like. The light looks tricky in there, actually. Well, it's really tricky. The light is really bright before you enter that wood section and you definitely jump into basically a fill of roots. Then you have to know where you're landing. Because I saw Greggy yesterday, some of his footage, he went straight into a tree. Then when it happened this to Greg now, you know, that's the, the, the goat, best, yeah, the it, best yeah. ever. Then um, I saw a lot of people, you know, uh, try to get confident in that interest because it's going to basically giving you a good feel or not about that last wood section. If you enter right, really good speed, you're like, you're so confident. If you start to case something and go straight to the first uh, tree, it's going to be difficult. It doesn't take long for that confidence to evaporate. So. Yes. Over the big gap jump then for Ferguson. Oh. It is one of the most difficult things about downhill racing is that variable speed element where you come off that motorway where, as I say, speed's right up along the fastest we've ever seen earlier this weekend. And then all of a sudden the track gets steeper and you need to anchor up, yes. recalibrate. Yeah, recalibrate and you have to be able to attack every section, like there flat or... Down over the finish line, Louisiana Ferguson sets our benchmark time with a 3 minute 48.9. But look at the look at the bike, tyres are clean, everything is perfect, the track is going to run faster and faster today. Frida running then for Norway, leaves the start hop for Union, forged by Steel City. So just for a bit of context then, Valley Hull's fastest time yesterday in quality was a 3.32.9, so we are expecting to see the times tumble here. Valentina Hull, though, very, very much the woman to beat Cedric. Yeah, it's good to be our and she's at home, and if, you know, if you don't get in her head and she can deal with it, she's going to be dangerous. She told us in the pre-event uh, press conference earlier in the week that she has got better at dealing with that. It's a it's a kind of a soft pressure, isn't it? Whenever you race at home and yeah. your friends and family, all your cousins come down from the hills. It's, yeah. you know, it's extra. Yeah, but sometimes the extra make you even better. Yeah. Then, uh, but you have to learn how to deal with it. I got a really good time. Running, yeah, goes yeah. into the hot seat by a tenth of a second. Yeah. So already we're seeing yeah. racing down to a tenth of a second. Just yeah. looking out the commentary booth window. 
Louise Anna Ferguson not even able to get herself into the hot seat in time. Yes. Now, but extra pressure sometimes make you just better than you were thinking it would be. Then uh, I hope she can deal with it today. She showed us last week she did between semi-final and final when she crashed into that rock section. I think she, yeah, she's uh, definitely a threat today for every girl. And a new Kurt then leaves the start hot for the USA. Interesting set of results last time out. Eighth and quali, ninth in the semi-final and 10th in the finals. But look now, she's yeah. 1.8 seconds to the good. Did, did really good over that bridge. She opened that line. It was good, like, just to get a better exit speed. Yeah. Newkirk, one of the big talents emerging from the US, riding for Beyond Racing, crosses the line. 2.8 yeah. seconds, so she did lose a yeah, little time the, in there. The, yeah, at the bottom. The bottom is, like, the second fastest spot on the track after motorway then uh... Michaela Parton leaves the star hot for resolute racing disappointment at the last round for her but she will put that behind her the young, the young Scotswoman from Fort William in the Highlands but has relocated recently to Duffy Bike Park where we heard Rachel Afferton say she rides every day so Michaela Parton 1.4 back now at the 47. four split 47 kilometer Again, we saw these these low these lower two splits. Whoa, just bike moving around yes. on the brake. She was way inside, and you see, like she lost grip. Cedric, how difficult is it to manage a track like this, where all of a sudden you may have a damper patch with more grip, and then a dry patch with loose? Usually, you find out when you're on that spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's on airing insight. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and you have to deal with it really quick. It's all about reaction time. Yeah, but yes. This will happen today, and it just happened here in that corner. Then, obviously, you know it's going to be one or two spots like this, but you ha you cannot think about those. And is that just bike time then? That's bike just timing on the bike, yeah. The rhythm of those big jumps at the top, really hard to get the back side. It's uh, really big. So here we are, Veronica Widman on track now in the national champ sleeve of Italy. And she's looking good here, Cedric. Yes, she lost a little bit of time at the top, but maybe that's the way to do it today. Try to save a little bit of energy and try to build your race run. Where more you go down, more you get confident, and more you leave those brakes alone. And will you feel that as a racer? Will she feel like it's going well? Will she feel like it's going faster? When, when, you, feel, when you have that feeling, it's just amazing. You know you're on a good one. And it's like, go, go time, and you want more. More, more, more. Veronica Whitman into the hot seat then, but Gracie Hemstreet leaves the start of the first year elite. One of the young riders who really lit up the first round in Lenzerheide, Hemstreet now on course. The 18-year-old from Canada for Norco Factory Racing. What a style, and what a run on the split four. Yeah. Almost four seconds down. Almost four seconds to the good night, Hemstreet. She was oh, yes. sixth last time out. And Lenzer had a fourth in the semi final, so. Almost 49, 40, 49k an hour. Yeah, we're waiting to see our first resident of the 50 kilometer in our club. <laughs> and we're expecting to see that smashed as the day goes on, of course. Our track is going to be faster and faster. It's grippy right oh, now. Hemstreet, oh. big whip over the finish line jump. Down to the finish. A great time for her. Nearly four seconds faster. Five and a half, sorry, my mistake. Five and a half seconds for Gracie Hemstreet. So, plenty of time up there still. Just a reminder, this is the semi-final, so it will be the top 10 riders, plus any protected riders outside that head through. Jess Blewett now for New Zealand, riding for GT oh! Continental Factory Racing. Oh, sorry, she landed so far on her first jump. She barely passed the landing by a meter and a half or oh, two. Jess Blewett. Wow. Whipping through our nine lives on this motorway section, but the live drone just giving you some indication of how fast it is up there. You can see that clear line right in the middle, and you get out onto that marbly stuff either yes. side of it. Yeah, and it, it looks like it's straight, but it's not that this speed, a little corner, it's just like a big one. It's one of the interesting things Lloyd Bruni actually said to us earlier in the weekend was that he feels that this is a track with a lot of straight lines, and it's all about linking those straight lines yes. together. Yeah. Look like a video game, you know, you have to go through those levels a lot, tuck, 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 tuck. then, um, yeah, you have to link everything perfectly. But 
you know, sometimes a little mistake somewhere, just if you can reset your button, make you a little bit even more hungry. Yeah. You, know, you just want to go for it. Then. But uh, today... Blew it, moving backwards a wee bit here. A good start, 1.4 up on Hem Street early on, but wow. moving away from her now. One and a half seconds back, it's split four. From that mistake, it's right there around speak three. That's, that's actually, what it is. Yeah, Cedric's right. That's the perfect example of how one little mistake on that fast section can just take four or five kilometers an hour off your trajectory. And rhythm, rhythm for the full moto. Yep. Moto section is like you need a perfect rhythm and perfect speed. If you're entering that, that motorway with uh, just lower speed, you're going to case the jump, you're not going to have a great feeling and you're going to start stinking. So Hemstreet is a non-protected rider, but she is looking like uh, she's done. She's given herself the best chance of getting through here. Jess Blewett crosses the line. Second for the moment. Yeah, looks good for Blewett too, that you'd have to say. Here is Kabiru. Kabiru. A, a rider that Cedric has spent a lot of time talking to. How do you rate her chances today, Cedric? I mean, it's hard, it's tough for her. She crashed and broke her back here. Then when you have to go through that section again, full speed, something is going to happen in your mind. And is that in the root section? Yeah, in the root section. But really impressed how those women can deal with stuff like this. Uh, uh, she's strong, she's fit, and she's hungry. Downhill mountain bike racing, a tough, tough sport, both yeah. physically and mentally, perhaps even more so mentally than physically. Two tenths back now for Kabiru. Yeah, She'll she... be looking to ease herself into the finals here. No yeah. heroics, 49 kilometers an hour. She's pretty much in contact, and that's why she has to run, you know, like take the chance now. No in the semi final, of course, but on this wood section, it's a lot of time to gain or lose here. It's all about confidence, leaving the brakes at the right moment to make sure you don't go through your travel and just like battle mark your fork. It's all about momentum, keeping the rhythm, heads up, and try to let the bike play, you know, just. Follow the bike. Well, she's found. She's found some time in the yes. woods here. A split four. She's six tenths up. Kabaru looking good. Definitely, she's been working on those braking area section. I like, try to don't brake too hard to stop the bike. She tries to keep the flow a little bit more and look like it's working so far in split four. The overall title winner from that COVID-affected 2020 season. Five World Cup wins to her name. Fifth last time out, Kabaru comes down to the line. Oh, what a Whoa. style! That is how you set a downhill bike down over the line. Now, Kabaru goes fastest. 1.2 seconds. Big ahead time of at the bottom. Big yeah, time at the bottom. Big Tell time you. at the bottom. That, tree, that, that last wood section is a lot of time. Phoebe Keel in first year elite as well as Hem Street leaves the start hut hoping to get into the finals today. She was like, ah, uh, she's battling with the, basically the gearing. She's on the way too easy. You want to have kind of perfect gear and like a harder gear here. It's one of the things that uh, we strangely, as a sport, never really gets talked about. The dark art of being in the right gear at all times in downhill. But you just saw, for example, there, just a couple of more gears up and yeah. those cranks would have counted for a lot more. Because before that section, oh, she's if I 1.7 on split three. Well, she was at we know, she's 1.7 up. She's obviously in the right gear all yes. right here, Phoebe Gale. And it's hard, you have to think about the corner before, you know, sometimes just to put the right gear for an exit corner and one or two crank was going to make the difference. Phoebe Gale from Scotland spends a lot of time obviously riding with Tani Seagrave. Tani and her really like two sisters in the pits. They're having a lot of fun riding together and it's a role I think Tani's really grown into and really enjoys working with Phoebe and we're starting to see the, the results of it here. Yeah, big outside line to carry the speed. It's a lot of lines there, like three choice. We will be losing five riders from this session plus as I say, it is the top 10 plus any protected rider outside of that, so we have to see how the numbers stack up. Pretty surprised that, you know, the, the light is good in that wood section, except here, like couple corner when it's really... This little turn here yeah. we saw yesterday. Oh, yesterday. But I think today it's better, more grip because it rained. Yesterday yeah. it was really loose, it was really dusty loose. before that big shower came. Phoebe Gale comes down the line then, judges it absolutely perfectly as she has the whole run, just two tenths behind Kabiru. In the second place, celebrates. Happy with that one, Gail. Yes, it's a good run. A big, big talent. 
But speaking of big talents, they don't come any bigger than the woman. Yeah, exactly. In the overall leader's jersey, Rachel Afferton leaves the start hub. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Afferton. Uh, looking for, you know, clips. You could see in that corner, but she want to go. And when she said, when she put the helmet on and those goggles, it's go, go time. Yeah, Rachel Afferton protected for this run so not a complete disaster for her we saw last time out greg menor with a puncture in the semis but still starting in the finals you see that camera is so good we see them in the entrance like you know the bike is working really well working really under legs like doing all the work no turbulence at the top and look at the time 2.6 on split three 2.6 going well afford and making it happen making wow. it happen she was she was cautious about her chances here this weekend, but Afferton oh, I going think, well. Like she say, having the family with her just make her that confident that she feel like home, basically, everywhere in the world with the family. Sixth fastest in quality yesterday, oh. Afferton. Three, three just on that wood section. She's making a big difference already, and it's a lot more to come. One of the big, big, parts of Afferton's life has always been the amount of time she spends on a downhill bike. There's none of this, uh, there's no pump, well, so there is obviously pump track sessions, but there's none of this sort of messing around. It is downhill bike or nothing for Rachel Afferton. And when it comes to runs like this, you can start to see why. 3.1 seconds, 49 kilometers an hour. Afferton making good, a good fist of this semi-finals run. Takes flight, heads down the line. Rachel Afferton speed tucking her way into the hot seat. 2.4 right, seconds right. faster. Catch me if you can. Rachel Afferton, fastest in the semi final. And that is a marker, Cedric. Yes, but I think she lost some time a little bit at the last wood section. She was a little bit, not short, but on that drop. She can make better. She can make this better. Tani Seagrave, what can she do now on the comeback trail for Canyon Collective FMD? A really, really tough experience in 2022. Coming back from that concussion injury, but Seagrave, she's back. Oh, she went, she went off or down. Yeah. Into those, you know, that, that section is probably the hardest because you need to connect everything perfectly and in the wet, it was really slippery. But so I'm just good wondering to see. if something's happened. Yeah, I, saw her I think she went the off there. there. She had normal speed, something happened. But definitely, oh yeah, she went down. Look on the right. She's all dirty, knees dirty. Nine seconds back now, Seagrave. Not protected either. Yeah, she crashed. Yeah, not, nine seconds. Not protected after missing so much of 2022. So yeah, she washed out on that corner, I guess, where all those roots are. Maybe missed up a line or something. So impressed about Tani, the way she come back. Oh, oh. she's losing the front here. Yeah. Woo. So there is some moisture up there yes. by the look of it. I think just a little bit under speed to take that line, you know, it's really off camber, roots everywhere. The crowd filling up here at the bottom of the Lea Gang finish ball. And it's just the beginning. It's going to be crowded as this afternoon. Yeah, this place always produces fantastic, fantastic racing as we head back to the start hop. Monica Rasnik for Slovenia leaves the start hop, the European continental champ. Always a pressure to have that jersey on the shoulders. That's why probably Tani had the problem. Hit right around here. Right around here, somewhere yes. towards that root section. Rasnik, 2.4 back on Afferton, so. Avoiding the big jump here. Oh! Ah. Get the front end down, Monica. Exactly. Looking fast through the motorway yeah, section of Rasnik. Yeah. Great and style on the bike. Exactly, in that corner, you don't want, you know, that's. Basically, that corner before this big motorway, you want to go death grip. That's what we talked last week, to have those fingers around the grip. No fingers on the lever on the brake. You can see Seagrave has just crossed the line 10 seconds back. Now she's moving that right shoulder very gingerly. Yeah. Not protected, as I say, so that may be the last we see of Seagrave today. We'll have to see how this thing shakes out. As we rejoin Harasnik, 48 kilometers an hour now, 0.6. Interesting on that corner, that wood ramp, you know, like that wood corner, the wall ride, you have to be in the middle, but so much geez into that corner with speed. By contrast, as I look out the commentary window, Rachel Afferton just spinning the legs on the bike. What? Getting ready for another crack at it. She's Rachel getting... Afferton the fastest so far in this semi. Yeah, Tani Seagrave all down the right-hand side, the jersey and trousers, dirty. 
Monica doing her work done on the split three. Yeah, she's pulled some time back yes. there. Yes, this is after motorway, then she did a good motorway. Lost quite a bit of time at the top though. Lost a little bit more, it's split four. Oh, she did good on that corner. Less inside than the other women's. Prasnik lands the big gap comfortably. Really quick into the corner, flat corner. Really hard, you know, when used to berm, you know, like flat corner, a lot different to attack, you know, different, you know, you cannot go so fast into no. it. You need to have a feel of those tires. Rasnick then down to the line. Yeah, and she's look at that. after by Alfred and by two yeah. hundredths of a second. So she did, super fast in that final yeah, section. She looked really fast on the Aswood section, but she lost a lot of time at the top. This woman doesn't deal in losing time. Nina Hoffman for the Santa Cruz Syndicate, the German national champion. And let's don't forget, it is point to get in a semi-final. Really good for overall. You cannot cruise down and have a safe run. No, third in the semis last time out before backing it up with a third in the finals for Nina Hoffman. On that latest generation of Santa Cruz V10. They've worked a lot in making this bike a lot more neutral. Oh, a five second on split three. She's just been attacking that track like she did in practice. And Hoffman's is perfectly set up, as you can see, five and a half, and she's in the 51 kilometers oh, an hour. So yes. our first resident off the 50 kilometer in our club is Nina Hoffman. Wow, that's a great run for to Nina. To be fair, we could have guessed that one. Gives it absolutely everything, the German. And she's so strong, then she can end all this wood section. Her upper body is so strong. You can just see on the back of those white trousers as well, the mark from the rear tire from where it's buzzed. That's how far off the back of the bike they get in downhill. 7.8 oh, yeah. seconds. She's Cedric. just building a confident mode. She go down. Nina Hoffman on the run today. What is going through Rachel Afferton's head? And if you're watching this, what looked like what looked like a superb run for Afrin and being absolutely obliterated by Nina Hoffman here. And the speed, 51. Oh, it's dark, she went down. Hoffman's down, but she does have time to play with. She is a protected rider as well. So, those two corners, we say they were streaky. This is what's fascinating about the semi-final format. Hoffman still and down, still down. <laughs> into the hot seat. Rasnick, Afferton, your top three, but just keep an eye on Nina Hoffman to see if there's any any damage other than to her pride with that one, but... Oh, she's losing at, at least four in that corner. Rode in a knee brace last time out, dealing with a slightly blown knee, so hopefully that wasn't the one she went down on, but here is Camille Balanche then. Last week, she was telling me after the race, a little debrief. She was really upset about the second run. You know, no as a semi-final she did. Then big hard. jump from oh, the big jump. there. Yes. Yeah, she went first in quali, first in the semi-final, and second in the final, losing out to that piece of mountain bike history by Rachel Affert. And so, Balanche for Comensal Dorval AM. Oh. Into the dark woods section now, and having to just tentatively Hover on the brakes, 49 kilometers an hour. But we have seen that there is time up there from that run of Hoffman, but... But yeah, 2.6 on so the split three means the motorway was not so good for her. I tell you, Cedric, Nina Hoffman looking ominous, but as we talk, she's still down in that finish area, holding that left knee. Well, I hope it's okay, though. We need her on the final. Hoffman absolutely tearing this Leo Gang track apart. Camille Balanche can't do anything about it. She's 3.4 back now. Yes, like Hoffman had a great wood section. Balanche looking good, but not fast enough so far. Camille Balanche, of course, former Winter Olympian, ice hockey player. Talent. Could do with some ice up in this commentary booth oh. at the minute. It is hot in here. But Camille Balanche for Switzerland, they missed out. At a win in her at her home round in Switzerland, hungry for a bit of revenge. Five hours up the road in the Lea Gang. Here she comes in down the finish line. Camille Balanche, what can she do today? Whoa! Oh. So there is time at that bottom yes. split. Yes, like where Nina maybe lost a little bit of time. Like she she attacked 
Balance attack even harder. Cedric, what are we seeing here? Are we seeing these protected riders just keeping the powder dry for the race run, do you think? No. Okay. I think it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's all in. It, well, speaking of all in, Valentina Ho, big off that one. She has spent her... Wow. Oh, she spent her life riding in this bike park. As I said at the top of the show, she knows all the lifties' first names. All her family and friends are here. Valentina Ho ominously chilled out this week. She fancies a win here at home in Lea Gang. Oh, she's on the good space. Like 1.3 on split three. On split time number three, 50k an hour. The 21-year-old breaks the 50 kilometer an hour section through the speed trap. 1.3 seconds up now. The halfway point. Ah, oh, she looks steady. She looks amazing in this wood section. Look how aggressive Valentina Hall looks. That body just set loadless them, elbows out, eyes. Wow. Right to the end of the visor. I was quick there. Yeah. And seven tenths now, so it's gone back a little bit, yeah. but crucially, it's still green. It doesn't matter by how much, as long as it's green. Yeah, but we saw Balanos getting some time at the bottom. Can she do the same? Valley Hole over that big gap. What a style. Yeah, absolutely fantastic to watch Valley Hole. Scrub some speed off a wee Scandi flick as she heads down into this tricky bit where Nina Hoffman did have a tip over. This is the last of our elite women on track now. Is Valentina Hole going to go fastest in the semi final and grab some points? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Out one way back the other. Valentina Hole. So, so much time. 5.6 seconds. Takes the semi final win and the points. Cruises her way. That last wood section, so much Whoa. time you can make if you still have energy and hit the line you want. Well, it's mission accomplished so far for Valentina Hall. She's won the qualifiers. She's won the semi-finals. Just a one session remains to win, and that is the all-important final. Valentina Hall, Cedric, do you know what? I think she's more time up there. Definitely, because, you know, like we saw already with Camille Balance getting a lot of time on the last wood section, but basically the the last part, like we're talking about, you know, 25 or 30 seconds, you know, the, the last, last, last section. So much time, Valentina just shaved, yeah. just there. So those results there, I was just so distracted, looking out the commentary booth window. Nina Hoffman still hobbling, but taking time to get selfies and autographs with the fans. So hopefully she's all right for our elite women's downhill World Cup final. Valentina Hall, here's how she did it. Amazing replay. We see the, the bike is working perfectly. Diving into this travel like deep. Such a difficult place to set a downhill bike up for because we've got all these steep natural wood sections, but the thing's also got to absorb all those high speed landings and jumps on the motorway. Look oh, at this. Wow. Oh, that's so beautiful. If that shot doesn't make you want to go out and ride a push bike, <laughs> I don't know what does. Valentino Ho. I just want to get my bike and go ride doing it her way and that is just about as stylish as it gets you see the the vibration going through the rear wheel when she lands let's hear from her now here is the last year in the lenta Heide, so let's keep it going like that cheers she said fucking valentina hole in apologies for the language but Eyes on the prize, she just wants to get back to the top. I think she'd do a race run now, wouldn't she? Yes, but uh, you know, like you want to get focused now, it's two run in the day, then you know, you want to keep that momentum, the focus, go back to your pit, see your family, your mechanic, debrief and go. As I say that, she's all but sprinted out the finish area, high-fiving absolutely everyone. So Valentina Hall fired up and ready for finals here in Lea Gang. Had to nose the bike in to make the best lap backside there. Massive jump off there. Oh, she cleared those jumps so good, and she got a lot of speed using crucially, the back. Yeah. Crucially getting some pedal strokes in there as well. And look at her through this wood section. That's where she made the time at the bottom. Not here she was good, but at the, 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 last, the last part mm. there, it's just where a lot of time is. And it, she knows this terrain, Cedric, as well. Here she goes over the jump. You know, people do scraps as well, no need for style, just to keep the bike really low, like less airtime.
better it is, then but you have to scrub. You can yeah. just not send it like pencil. <laughs> That's always my move, which tends to be quite low anyway. Thankfully, <laughs> Ricks don't fly, but it is hotting up here in Liagang. Absolutely baking conditions now. I'm, 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 I'm sweating. It's hot. I can see that. Yes. I can, <laughs> I can see that, sadly. I mean, but, that's racing, and that's how hot it is in there. Yeah, well, it's hot in here for us, but it is hotter at the top of the mountain. You can bet as the elite men get ready for their semi-finals runs. Look at the view. This is Leo Gang for you, Austria. Absolutely. If you, if there is one place that puts the mountain back in mountain biking, it is Leo Gang in Austria. Yeah, and uh, and the cows like that, you know, they probably have like perfect teeth, like uh, you know the size. Like when they eat the grass, it's like perfect everywhere. You know, like uh, it's like one millimeter higher. Okay, well, one man hoping for a huge result to back up. An absolutely huge result last time out is the UK's Jordan Williams. Is he headed for the hot seat in his first elite level World Cup? Jordan Williams crosses the line. Dakota Norton cannot believe it. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. I don't know if it's sunk in properly yet, but it's definitely sinking in day by day. Well, after my semi-final run, I didn't actually think I could win it. 